Hello and welcome to another exciting Breakfast with Unity. I'm your host, Max Moreau, and today we're going to be continuing our little uh, episodes on uh, how to do Radial Fog of War. So we handled the the ability for units to see other units. So we have two scripts involved in this. We have Fog of War Sight and Fog of War Visibility. Fog of War Visibility goes on anything that you want to disappear when you can't see it, and Fog of War Sight is goes on anything that you want to be able to see objects. This will work for multiple objects. We don't have a really good test case in this scene, but um, maybe I'll make one to prove it later. But the way it works is very simple. It sends a message to the objects, and Fog of War vis vis Visibility, if it gets this, if it gets this uh, message, sets Observe to True, which in update, if Observe is true, it sets the renderer to true, and, um, and else it turns it off, and then it immediately resets it to false. So basically, if multiple things say that I can see you, you'll be able to see them. If one thing says I can see you, you'll be able to see them. If something doesn't say on that frame that I can see it, then it will not have observed and it will it will uh, disable this renderer. So um, what are we going to add? We're going to add it so right now you can't really see how far our vision range is. You can just see the enemies come in. What we're going to do is we're going to make it so that you can see that. And the way we're going to use that is we're going to actually use some some stencil stuff that we already have here, actually. So if you remember from our stencil episode, we have the ability to create objects that cut out ob other objects. And what's nice is these objects don't actually really care about... Um, they don't really care about whether they're in front or behind the object. So what we're going to do is basically um, we're going to... Um, set up this scenario, but we're going to have a mask in front of the camera that, that renders um, a semi-transparent um, uh, polygon. And then we're going to render a sphere that uh, shows the, the area that we can see. And so it will stop obscuring that. We could do a two-stage thing using a stencil as well. I'm not going to cover that on this show, but basically so we're currently only using stencil values of just setting a stencil value and checking a stencil value, but you can actually add two stencil values so we could have like two stages. So one where, where it's totally black, one where you've seen the map, but it's still visible, and one where um, you can see clearly. Um, but we're just going to do the one step on this one. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to need a couple of these things. So um, I'm going to go back into our rail fog of war, and yeah, sure, we'll not save that. Um, so I'm going to create a uh, 3D object. We're just going to create a um, quad. And this quad we're going to put in the camera. So I'm going to put this inside the main camera and we're going to set it up so that it is at uh, the camera's position and camera's orientation. And I want to check something. We may have to reverse the orientation actually. 180. Does that work right? Where's our quad? If I flip this back around. Okay, that's right. So so we're gonna do this and I'm gonna look at the game screen and we're just going to bring it in till it obscures the whole screen. So we're just gonna put it just before the clip point, which I think is a three zero. Yeah. Let's put it at three one. So now we're gonna give this thing a material. Um, it needs to be a semi-transparent material. Do we have one that's already set up for this? So we have diffuse. We don't. So we're going to have to create one for semi-transparent. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to open up. Um, so what I just want to check real quick is if we go to the stencil buffer shader. I'm going to save this. And we go to the cube here. This uses... Diffuse not equal one. Okay, so I'm going to open up diffuse not equal one. So diffuse ref not equal one. That's what the actual name of the shader is for whatever reason. And we're going to open that up. And then for comparison, we're going to open up um, the built in shader uh, default resources extra. We want alpha diffuse. So we want to basically just add the features that are in Alpha Diffuse into here. So um, what we're doing is we need to change the Q, oh wait, transparent. Hopefully this will still work. We will find out. We may have to tweak this. This may be a rough episode. Let's find out. Tags, all right, we're gonna 
Render type of opaque key geometry, transparent, ignore projector true, render type transparent. All right. So we're going to do that. And what else do we need from here? Um, we probably need, um, let's see, main text in UV. So we just need to set the alpha, which we're already actually doing. So this might be all we need to do to make this thing render, render transparent. So let's test to see if this works. So, um, Oops, I didn't want to actually change this one. Eh, whatever. I'll save it, and then we will duplicate it. Um, and then I'll fix it using uh, using the magic of version control. So I'm just going to duplicate this one. We call this transparent. Yeah, let's go with that. And um, I'm going to leave it in the, in the, uh, now let's bring it into our project. So, so let's see if this works first. So we're going to go into our real fog of war. We're going to create a new material based on this. And we're going to attach it to our, our um, quad, which is underneath the main camera. All right, and then um, what we're going to do is we're going to test, test to see if this works. We're going to change the alpha value and make sure that it actually gains alpha, which it did not. Oh, and I know why. Uh, because we did not actually change this one. So we need to call this transparent diffuse not equal one. Save. So now if we go here, oh, it still is set, right? Well, that's a shame. So what are we missing? All right, so alpha diffuse times color CRGB alpha is CRGB or CA. Huh, this is looking looking right, but it's not right. Key transparent, ignore projector. Render type transparent. Oh wait, I should be comparing this to transparent diffuse. Well, they're both the same right now, but um, let's keep, I'm curious if I remove the stencil stuff, I'm just going to temp temp temporarily remove that line and see if that fixes our problem for whatever reason. Shouldn't, but good, it didn't. That makes me happy. Um, I just want to see something. If I just choose tr transparent diffuse, so that definitely works. But for some reason, my custom stencil transparent diffuse not equal one does not. So since this didn't help, I'm going to paste back in our stencil stuff so that we don't forget about it later. Gonna be confused. Okay, so this says Surf Lambert. Surf Lambert Alpha. There we go. There's a little bit of extra thing that we needed there. Save. Yay! Okay, so now we have something that's semi-transparent. So I'm gonna make this black so it looks like we're it's a darkness thing. And we're just gonna make it real dark to start. And now we're going to cut into this using a sphere. Hopefully, we may have to make a few minor adjustments. So I'm going to try and do it with whatever we used in our example. I, because my brain doesn't work, I'm going to just double check it again. We're going to go to the sphere here, and it's using mask Z, uh, mask one Z less. Now we may have to change this. The reason being is the old one used uh, geometry. It has to come in before, and actually transparent might come in. No, transparent has to come in after. So this is probably not going to work. So we're going to go ahead and give it a shot, though. So I'm going to create a new material based on this one. And we're going to throw it in our folder here. And go back to our radio fog of war. I'm not going to save this scene. So we're going to now create a sphere, 3D object sphere. And we're going to give it our shader here. 
And as you can see, it didn't quite do what we want. Um, it, that's kind of interesting. It's, what is it doing? I would have expected it to not render at all, but, um, but yeah, that's not what I expected. I expected it to just kind of not exist. I should probably name this sphere so that we can find it. You know, call this um, visibility sphere. So what is this doing when it goes over and just why is it showing? Oh, it's because I don't know why. Oh, it's using the wrong thing. It should be using this. Well, that explains a lot. So now it's doing what I expected. It's, it's invisible and it probably isn't going to do anything. Oh, it worked. Did it just work? We don't have to do anything? It worked. Okay, cool. So all we have to do is throw this visibility sphere on the player. Put it at zero, zero, zero. And make it the same radius as our vision cone, which is five. So we're just going to set the... Um, so that's the radius, so this should actually be 10 by 10 by 10. And now if we hit play. Okay, so it's working, but <laughs> that's funny. Um, but it has a collider on it, so it's actually pushing the objects away as we move around. We can also see that when when the player rotates, it kind of can show the edges of our circle, which is not so good. But um, we could use a higher poly circle, or actually, it would probably be better to actually use a a, a circle circle and use some sort of uh, transparent masking that uses the alpha channel. Mars ours might actually even support that right now. Um, I may give that one shot. Let's first fix the little collision error. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the what is it called? Um, into this, uh, the visibility sphere. We're going to get rid of the sphere collider here. So now if we hit play, there's our enemies that come into the screen, and you can tell that that it was at the same point that we can actually see. So that's actually kind of cool. It looks like it's, looks like it's working. That's awesome. So, um... Yeah, I think I'm actually going to call that an episode, and um, we might play around more with uh, with these things in the future. But um, but yeah, so this will give you uh, one method of uh, displaying a vision area. As I said, it might be better to actually switch it to a circle at some point, uh, which would require us to make sure that we have a renderer that can accept the alpha values um, for our uh, culling. I'm not sure if we have that, um, and I'm not going to bother working on that. That's probably more than a 10-minute uh, exploration. But um, this will work for right now, and I'm pretty happy with how that turned out, and that was actually pretty smooth. So thank you very much for joining us. If you have any questions, please email me, pushypixels at pushypixels.com. You can also tweet me at Drakfire. That's D-R-A-K-F-Y-R-E. Um, thank you very much. You guys have a great one, and I will see you tomorrow with more Breakfast with Unity. Please support us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Cooking with Unity. Thanks.